for the first time in my adult life, I have hope. I'm going to buy a ski pass this year and I'm going to shred and I'm going to go back and I'm going to get emotional talking about it, but I'm going to go back and do that 50 mile mountain bike race, you know, five years after the accident. And I'm going to do it better, faster, stronger than I ever have before. So I'm so energized at the end of October, I'm, I'm 12 years sober from alcohol. So this concept that this addiction recovery and the glutamate GABA relationship that ketamine seems to help with, really, I can do that with food. This addiction, this compulsive behavior, I'm less likely to send off that inflammatory email to somebody these days. Everything's looking up. I've really connected with a lot of people in the Rivero community. So I, I'm very, very, very thankful. So I think this will have the butterfly ripple effect. All right. So welcome. <clears throat> we have Alex today who's going to share his, I guess, success story. So Alex, if you don't mind introducing yourself and... Uh, Let's let's get started. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, excuse me. I'm Alex Mintling from Eagle, Colorado, a little bedroom community to Vail, Colorado. Um, as you can see by the equipment, and congratulations on the same choice in microphones, Sean. <laughs> um, I I have been part of this community for three plus months and just been enjoying every second of it. So I'm honored to to be on the show and share my story. Well, awesome. I will say that uh, I've, I've been through Eagle. Uh, you know, I went just not to not to detract, but the first time I learned how to ski was in Vail, Colorado. And I was about 25 years of age and I was six foot five, 280 pounds. And back in those days, you put you on really long skis and they went really, really fast. And the guys who took me skiing were on the U.S. ski team and they, they had no mercy on me and they sent me down a black and I remember just rolling for what must have been a half a mile and you know, crashing at, at light speed. But anyway, that's <laughs> that's my record. Look. That's my last time I was in Vail. So it's it's a nice part of the world though. So thank you. Anyway, thanks for being here, Alex, and thanks for sharing your story. Yeah, well, it's it's not ironic that uh one of the major orthopedic centers in, in the country yeah. is resides at the base of the ski hill in Vail. So yeah, he's with Stedman Clinic. No, Stedman, no coincidence. Stedman Hawkins Clinic was up there. Yeah, I think Stedman yeah. left or something. Yeah, I've had a couple yeah. surgeries there myself. Yep. That, that I think in hindsight could have been prevented by um, eating, the uh, like as Ken Berry says, a, a human-appropriate diet or whatever he says. But yeah, yeah my, my story's not untypical to what I've been hearing on this community. And it's basically, I struggled. I was always, I always had a cold in the middle of, you know, summertime. I played little league baseball, played sports growing up and I always had a handkerchief or something. I was, my body was just not doing well on what in hindsight I see, you know, the standard American diet. And that continued on it. And it really spilled over into my mental health. I, I fought you know, chronic fatigue syndrome back in the eighties when that was a popular diagnosis. I did a little recreational bike racing and and tried to, you know, get really lean and fat was the enemy. And, you know, I survived somehow on rice cakes and, you know, oat sprouts. I, I spent, I was born and raised in Boulder, Colorado. So mm -hmm. as you can imagine, yeah. the name of the game in, in bike racing anyway, was to, you know, power to weight ratio and to get lean. And I thought the vegan vegetarian way was the only way and fast forward to 2016, 17, did a split up with a with a nice woman and started exploring intermittent fasting, got turned on to Jason Fong and and all that good stuff. So I, I went keto. And fast forward, I I I like I said, I, I do some recreational mountain bike racing. I, July 4th, 2018, I did a 50 mile mountain bike race in Breckenridge, two laps. I had done it many times before as teams and individual. And I was really, I was eating at the time, this sounds really crazy, but I was eating a lot of beans because I was told by a nutritionist that fiber was the key to life. Mm -hmm. So I was eating a lot of beans, no, not a lean protein, like the, the emphasis was on lean, no fat in it. Did that bike race. And then uh, two weeks later, literally, I got involved in a recreational logging accident where I was run over by a 1800 pound ATV while mm -hmm. chainsawing up near Steamboat, wow. airlifted to Denver in the hospital for four days. Uh, got out and then my physical injuries have been on the mend and, and, and I'll get to that point with the inflammation and stuff here in a, in a second. But, um, I, I really was touched by post-traumatic stress and it subsequently did ketamine infusions to stave off my suicidal ideation, et cetera, et cetera. So that, that's my story in a nutshell came to carnivore, like hardcore carnivore over three months ago. 
And I don't think I'll ever look back. So that that's the story in a nutshell. And I'll I'll leave it open to you to ask start asking me questions. Well, I mean, thanks for for that relating that anyway. I mean, that's you know, so obviously, you know, it's it's I'm just wondering, you know, because you know, you were active, you know, you're biking, you're doing all these these sort of sports. And it's kind of like me. I'm very much a uh physically that's part of my well-being is being able to physically do things and having a significant accident where I don't, I don't know what your injuries were, but I mean, it sounds like, you know, it significantly limited your ability to do things and that's, that's kind of way heavily on your mind. And so is, is that, is that fair to say what was going on? Oh, I could get emotional thinking about it. What happened was I, I had a bunch of broken ribs, a brachial plexus injury, which means mm -hmm. the nerve bundle going down to my arm and hand. I had a dead hand. It's, it's about, I would say 90% better. I'm a carpenter by trade and, you know, my right hand is everything, but that's better. I can live with that. My, my left ankle was crushed. I did not have surgery on it, but it was crushed. It was one of those things where maybe it would have been better if it had been broken, maybe. Um, not sure, but I had all the personal protective equipment on the helmet and the Kevlar chaps and my camelback saved my spine. I had no spinal cord injury. Um, the, the, the injuries proved to be non-life-threatening. I mean, when they flew the helicopter in, they 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 didn't know if I had internal bleeding going on. It was up on a mountain. It was a pretty sketch situation. But um, fast forward, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I had had prior to that, I had perfectly good knees. I mean, that was the thing. I, I have I've had a couple of hip surgeries at the clinic you mentioned. Um, you know, but great knees, and that was my always my base was my lower body, my ability to telemark ski, which is, you know, different kind of skiing. Um, that was my base. And I always prided myself on that. And that was my, always my go-to. I could jump on a bike and, and recover. And I, I thought after that accident, it's exactly what was going to happen. There was so much trauma to my knees because of the way I was contorted underneath the machine that, that my knees just never recovered. And I, I did injections at said clinic. I've done all the imaging and all this stuff. And they, they did, there was no, you know, no ACL problems, no MCL, no nothing, just, just inflammation and, you know, pre-arthritis -arthrit or whatever, you, you know, more than that, but I, I did everything under the sun and, and, you know, I started hearing and heartburn's another thing, but my heartburn is gone, but we can touch on that. But the joint inflammation from, I don't know if you're familiar with the knees over toes guy, but about the same time I got turned on to, 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 to Dr. Sean Baker here. I started getting tuned into knees over toes guys. And I got a little home gym in my garage, nothing very incredibly modest, but the things I can do, you know, between carnivore and knees over toes guys for the first time in my adult life, I have hope I'm going to buy a ski pass this year. And I'm going to shred and I'm going to go back and I'm going to get emotional talking about it, but I'm going to go back and do that 50 mile mountain bike race, you know, five years after the accident. And I'm going to do it better, faster, stronger than I ever have before. So I'm so energized. Yeah. That's where I'm at. We're just out of curiosity. How old are you now? I'm 57. 57. So yeah, I mean that's 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 great to 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 be able to do that. I mean, there's a lot of people that, you know, I mean, the, the diet is important, but also the lifestyle before that, you know, and, and the the lifelong commitment to you know being in shape and taking care of yourself and exercise has a big role to to play as well. But it is interesting, and it is something I've seen over and over again. It, you know, you like you said, you were one of the premier orthopedic clinics in the world. And they've got all the, the latest tools. I mean, you know, a lot of people, you know, they, they will talk about that, that, that place as a, as a, you know, you know, HSS in New York, you know, there, there's different big orthopedic clinics. And despite all the, the, the stuff, you know, it's changing the diet has arguably a bigger, bigger impact than, than all these, you know, multi, multi, you know, thousand dollar procedures that, that, that are out there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I the, 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 um, Doctor, oh, who'd you have on a month or so ago that that's coming out with a book that about the brain energy? Oh, Chris Palmer, yeah, Chris Palmer, yeah, Chris Palmer. I mean, there's some amazing uh, Georgia, Doctor Georgia E. Like, mm -hmm. I'm seeing this connection, and it's no, it's not insignificant that I was doing um, ketamine for post traumatic stress, and Doctor um, E really talked about ketamine actually in one of her TED talks or one of her video talked on YouTube about how really we don't need all that stuff if we're eating properly. Mm -hmm. And that just so resonated with me. I've, I've struggled my whole life with physical, like I've always wanted to be that, that athlete that just could go out and pop out of the house and go do a 10 K run. And, you know, I did those things, but they're always a struggle. 
you know? Um, so just to be back on my feet, literally and figuratively, it's, it's just a, it's a miracle. And, um, I'm just on fire for this, for this way of life. And, and I haven't been perfect. Let me, let me tell you, I haven't been perfect, but the times I've slipped up or, or backslid into some, you know, sugar laden car- carbohydrate, a, I don't beat myself up for it. B, the next morning, cool, that's fine, and, and I just keep moving on. I had two ribeyes this morning for breakfast. I've got to go to work here in a little bit, but um, it it it's really life changing. And, and and also, I want to mention uh, at the end of October, I'm I'm 12 years sober from alcohol. So this concept that this addiction recovery and these um, the glutamate GABA relationship that that ketamine seems to help with. Um, really I can do that with food and I can, you know, uh, you know, um, yeah, this addiction this compulsive behavior. Um, I'm less likely to send off that email to one of my clients or subcontractors. I'm in the building industry <laughs> and I'm less likely to send off that, that inflammatory, um, email to somebody these days, you know, I'm just like, okay, I'm going to pause, let this one slide. We'll deal with it tomorrow. So yeah, everything's looking up. Yeah, I mean, the the cognitive benefits are, are, I think, many people have discovered those. And it is kind of nice when you think about it. What we have as a society is, is a lot of people that are brain inflamed, that are that are just not, their brain is just not working correctly, and they don't interact very well. We have all this sort of animosity between each other. So it'd be kind of everybody who's just chilled out and eat a steak, we would probably do a lot better in overall. Let me ask you about, so you, you said three months ago, you started going hardcore in this. What I mean, did you notice anything when you changed? I don't know what you're doing directly. Maybe some sort of ketogenic diet prior to that. How how did that transition occur, and why did it occur? Well, I was doing curly fries and uh, you know double whoppers with cheese, and you know not not the proper diet. Um, I, I got you know it's an old cliche, but I got sick and tired of being sick and tired. Uh, split up with a girlfriend, and she essentially at one point called me fat. And um, that hurts your feelings. I mean, I don't care who you are. That that hurts a little bit. And well, she called me fat more than once, but we're not together anymore. But um, I got sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I was I was taking antacid tablets like Skittles. And I was taking all those over-the-counter Pepsi. I don't even know what they are anymore. Like I, I, It was like, if I didn't know that it was heartburn, I thought for sure that I'd be, I was having a heart attack. I mean, it was that bad. And, you know, I kept hearing these promises and these, 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 these things on the, on your, on your podcast, on, on your stories that, you know, the Harper went away and that, that I'm, I've, I'm never looking back. There's nothing to go back to for me and the whole cholesterol thing and the whole cholesterol argument, you know, like none of it holds water for me. And, and I know I'm an N of one, but holy cow, what a, what a neat, neat way to live and just so much energy. I, you know, I, to some people they'll scoff at this, but. I, I, back in the old days, I used to be able to do 50 push-ups in in segments, but that was my goal. Before I went to bed each day, I tried to do 50 push-ups. Right. Well, prior to Carnivore four six months ago, I could do like three. My energy was so depleted. And this morning, I did a set of 27, and then a set of 24. However, that math works out. 23, and I did my I, I banged my 50 off, and then I've been messing around with kettlebells, and I tuned into your show. I'm like, oh yeah, if they need a speaker, I'll, I'll come on there. But, and it's not forced. I'm not like going to the gym. I'm not like, I, I want to grab those heavy things now. It's not like, oh, this is a chore. I want to feel that energy coming through my body. Yeah. I've seen, a, and some of you guys be aware of this quote is exercise is not a punishment for, you know, eating the wrong things. It's, it's, it should be a celebration of what your body can do. And then you get that, you start to feel, Hey, I just want to I like it's like getting a you know a fast new sports car. You're like let me let me take this thing out for a spin. You know you kind of want to you want to you want to press things a little bit. So it is kind of fun. Did you um uh you know you'd mentioned your ankle and brachial plexus injury? I mean what, what I mean the ankle is crushed. I mean is that uh, did you notice that just across the board improvement on all these things or, or what's what's going on with this? Yeah, well, what happens when you get a a crushed ankle for those of you that don't know, and then you don't do any rehab, you start to compensate. So your knees, my knees were jacked up in the accident anyway, but I started to compensate. So my hip flexors, like everything got out of alignment and me being stubborn, and I've been through so much physical therapy and I, the, you know, the, uh, the industrial medical complex, I I'm souring on that. Sorry to say, and, and including orthopedics and what they can and can't do for a person. Um, so I just, 
I, yeah, I was really jacked. Yeah, absolutely. I've got more, I can get my ankle to pop now and I know that doesn't sound good, but I can get it to flex to a point where, oh, that feels better. And I couldn't do that. It was so stiff from before mm. that I, I couldn't get it to mobilized. Now my range of motion is better. And, and this is zero physical therapy. This is just me going to work. I'm not, I don't do yoga, nothing wrong with yoga, but I don't do anything. I work physically and, and I, do my thing and I'm on my bike more. Um, it's just happening organically. Yeah. Hey folks, it's Dr. Sean Baker here. If you guys are enjoying these success stories, well, you can become your own success story. You can do that by heading over to carnivore.diet. You can sign up for a free 30 day trial and get started today. We're looking forward to supporting you. Our community is wonderful and we'd love to see your success. You mentioned, you know, PTSD and I, you know, I guess obviously, you know, I mean, it was a huge traumatic event where your, your life was significantly threatened and, you know, I very easily could have been killed from this. How has, have you noticed that the diet has changed that? I mean, you know, I mean, I, I've talked yeah. to a number of people with PTSD and they've said that's the case. I just want to see if that's been the case for you. A hundred percent and not to be too melodramatic, but I'm not really a gun guy, but when I, at the height of my post-traumatic stress, I did. I wasn't diagnosed. Nobody had diagnosed me. I'm pretty high functioning. I wasn't, I don't think I was clinically depressed. I had trauma and I didn't feel safe on this planet. And I, I was going to bed. I couldn't go to bed and I didn't say sleep, but I couldn't go to bed without a rifle, a shotgun, a couple of pistols by my side. Mm -hmm. I, and I live in the safest community in the US of A. I have deadbolts on my doors, but in my brain, I wasn't safe on this planet. And, and that's also happens to be when my suicidal ideation was at its highest. I think a lot of my, in hindsight, I think a lot of my strife, I, I, I struggled to get a, a four year college degree. It took me, you know, six years and a couple different colleges, but I struggled to get a college degree because I couldn't focus this ADHD. You know, I have incredible focus now. I go to work now and I, I have to do my share of, of computer work, um, and I can sit down and bang out emails and spreadsheets. And I mean, the, the focus is unreal. So does that speak directly to trauma? Absolutely. Because when, when, when I'm traumatized and my brain, those neural pathways and those dendrites are doing all that other stuff, I can't focus because it, I just can't focus. So people, and I'm going to segue into something that maybe you will or won't ask, but the cost of the meat. I have left so much. I've owned my own business for 28 years now as a contractor. I have left so much money on the table by not being clear-minded about change orders, about who I work for and who I don't. So to me, I don't care how much the state costs. I mean, I do, but I don't because this is my medicine. Yeah, it's, you know, I, I, I just did an interview with a guy named Dr. Joseph Mercola. Some of you people remember, we, we had a discussion. We talked about the fact that, you know, there's people in one of the interviews I've done recently on this podcast, they spend so much money on healthcare. I mean, the one guy who was going to the emergency room, he said 200 times over the course of a couple of years, that literally costs thousands and thousands of dollars every time you do that. And to go from that huge amount of expense to, hey, I'm going to eat a couple of ribeyes a day, which, you know, 20 bucks or something like that, depending where you're at. I mean, it's inconsequential compared to the amount of savings you get. And I, and I almost think, I, not almost, I do think this, if we would just put our emphasis on feeding people correctly instead of pumping them full of medicines and having to go through procedure, procedure, we, we would save so much money. It's cheaper to feed people good food than it is to treat their health conditions. And I mean, it, and as you mentioned, there's all this collateral stuff. You know, how much money are you losing every year because you can't focus and you're making mistakes and so yeah, it does come out. And you know, most people and you know, ultimately you're not eating the junk food, you're not even having to buy all these supplements and you know, the all this stuff that that costs money unnecessarily. So I don't think it's expen I don't think it's too expensive. In fact, uh even if this diet cost me five times what it does now, it'd still be worth it to me. And I think that's that's you know, I think it's powerful. What do you eat? So let's just talk about you. I know that people everyone, what does he eat? What kind of food do you eat? What kind of what kind of stuff are you eating? Well, for the for a while, I've I've been off of a cur for a couple of weeks, but I'll go to either Whole Foods or even my local supermarket, and typically you have to order ahead of time because they don't keep their beef fat trimmings. But I got turned on to air frying, um, so I'll air fry. I'll take my beef with you know what whatever cut of meat I happen to have, and I'm not hung up on grass fed or or, or grain finished or whatever um, too much. But um, I'll I'll fry I'll I'll cube it. I'll fry it up, throw some salt on it, and eat you know 
bite for bite, I'll have a piece of meat with the 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 beef fat. And yeah, there's some of the some pieces are more grisly than others, and I spit them out. It's not very you know socially acceptable, but that's what I do. And I've been off of that, but I've been I've been dipping like this morning. I had uh, a couple ribeyes with uh, I melted Kerrygold butter and a little vat, and I just dipped every single bite in the Kerrygold butter. It tasted great. Had plenty of salt on it, and I'm I'm good. I don't I probably won't need to eat till until tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not trying to go OMAD. I'm not trying to do anything. I'm eating. I'm following the rules that I've been taught on this on this platform. You know, eat eat when you're hungry. You know, and there's no bre- breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So that's what I'm doing. Yeah. So you're obviously, you're, you're focusing on maintaining a, a higher fat content, which I think can be very helpful, pertaining, particularly pertaining on the condition. And, uh, uh, and I, and I agree. I mean, why else would you eat if you're not hungry? I mean, it doesn't make sense. I mean, you know, in some, right. some cases people are under eating cause it just, you know, their appetite gets so suppressed on this diet, but it is, uh, it is interesting to see that. Um, and also, as you mentioned, you don't really worry about grass finished versus grain fish. And, and that's been my experience. I, I've just seen so many people where it doesn't seem to make a difference. And so when those people talk that you must do it this way, I'm just like, well, that's, that's just not what reality seems to show. And that's uh, really important. I'm glad you, glad you, you, you mentioned that because a lot of people say, I can't afford it because I can't afford to eat grass finished or I can't afford to, you know, um, you know, add these supplements or take organ supplements, you know, whatever, whatever the excuse is, or I don't want to eat raw testicles or whatever, whatever some people are promoting doesn't need to be that way. Um, so I'm going to go back, you know, you, you, so you said you, you had a girlfriend or ex, you know, relationship person that was saying you're fat and, and obviously not, I don't know. I don't know what the whole relationship was. I mean, obviously that's, if I called my girlfriend, fat, well, she's not, I mean, it would be a complete, she'd laugh at me, but if I called her fat, you know, or made insults to her, she would, it would, it would not end up very well. I mean, but I mean, so you, you know, was this after you'd been in an accident and, and I mean, you know, you, you'd been, you know, suicidal and all those things. Is this going on at the same time, basically? Yeah. 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 You know, I, in Vail, you don't lose your girlfriend. You just lose your turn. There's a lot more guys than, than girls up here. So, you know, that's just a fact of life. Um, but the 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 maybe maybe that was inappropriate of a line, but we're gonna go with it. Uh, you know, it, it, I have a fairly well balanced sense of humor and and at times self deprecating. So I you know I take everything with a grain of salt to a point, but you get enough girls calling you fat mm-hmm. in in jest or not, and it it gets to you. And get, to get back to this accident, like it really like the, the injuries themselves did weren't gonna kill me, but the after effect mm-hmm. of them, yeah. And the ability not to exercise. So I, I want to make this point really clear. Anytime I've ever lost weight or got fit in my life, physically fit, it was because I was restricting and I was exercising like a maniac, mm-hmm. right? K- literally killing myself to to get to that fitness level. I was miserable, irritable. You know, people didn't like being around me. I was a horrible boss to my employees and my subcontractors. Like not a nice guy, restricting and exercising like crazy. I'm not restricting and I'm not exercising like crazy. I go outside yesterday, it snowed. I came over Vail Pass yesterday and it was a semi, you know, I had an hour delay on sitting on Vail Pass watching it snow. And I was like, hey, this is cool. Ski season's early. But, you know, I'm, I'm not exercising like a maniac and I've dropped, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm being, you know, conservative, but I've, I've, I've released 20 pounds since I started this thing. And I, I, and, and, and my muscle is increasing. I can just tell by my workload with my, you know, pseudo workouts in the garage. I can be like, wow, I'm just doing way more and it's way easier than it ever has been before. So I don't know if that answers your question, but no restricting and, and not ever being hungry. I've never been hungry in the last three plus months. And I can honestly say that I've never been hungry. Yeah. It sounds a little bit like, you know, I can, I can go back to where, where, you know, I'm like I said, I'm 50, it's going to be 56. So we're similar in age. When I was, I think, about 42, when I realized 280 pounds, 285 pounds, and I was like, I'm tired of being this heavy. I was competing in strength sports, so the weight was was of benefit, but I but it wasn't doing me any metabolic favors. And so I decided I'm going to lose weight. And so I restricted calories tremendously. I was exercising three times a day. I mean, I was getting up at 6 a.m., 5 a.m. in the morning, a couple thousand jump ropes, you know, working out on my lunch hour, going home before bed, doing another couple thousand jump ropes. And dramatically re- reducing my calories, and I lost weight. I got leaner, but I was like you said, I was just hungry and grouchy and irritable and not not happy. And that was something that you know started you know my my sort of exploration of different nutritional strategies over the years, which eventually led me to 
this crazy, nutty, wacky, you know, dangerous all meat diet, as some people would point, which some people would claim. Uh, and I, you know, like you, I, I find that right now I don't really have to do that much. I mean, I still exercise because I enjoy it, but my, my, the volume I have to do, uh, the, the, the level of thought that I have to do to stay lean is, is minimal, which I think is, I think that's a really, a really freeing sort of aspect to this, which I think is neat. Um, so, uh, so you are now, I don't know, five years, a couple of years, how long ago was the accident again? You said you're coming up in the five year. It was two, July, 2018. So next year will be five years so, so next July. Okay. And so, um, you've obviously, you know, leaned out, um, any, I mean, I don't know if you, there's a new, new girl in the life or whatever. I mean, other people around you, has anybody noticed your difference? Cause I mean, they probably would have, I mean, surely if you're in, I mean, you're, you you have a company, you're, you work with people, surely someone has noticed a difference. Is that, is that fair to say? Yeah. Lots of people, lots of people. And, and in fact, said gr- ex-girlfriend, I ran into her the other night at a, at a f- social function and she commented on it, you know, and, 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 you know, whatever, but <laughs> yeah, lots of people got me and I'm a nicer guy. Yeah. Like I'm a nicer guy. Like people, Oh, you're my mother. Okay. My parents still live in Boulder. I, I visit them as much as possible. They're in great health. And my mom just looks at me and she's like, you're, you're so much more patient and you're so much nicer. I'm like, yeah, mom, I love you, babe. you know? And so it, it's, it's not just in the physical manifestation of who I am. It's, it's the, it's the woo woo, you know, good vibes I'm putting out there. So, you know, yeah, there's that. Any, has anybody said, Hey, you're eating all meat. It's going to kill you. It's bad. It's crazy. Have you gotten much of that feedback? Oh yeah, Definitely. Oh, your heart's going to stop. Oh, what about your cholesterol? Like, and they just, they, they literally, there's a visceral, a couple people have been like, so I don't even tell them what I'm doing anymore. Cause I don't really have the time to waste with them. But the, the ones I have told, I'm going carnivore, you know, and I, I do it a little bit for shock value. Cause I'm a little bit of a, um, I like that. I like a little bit of shock value and I like getting people's faces a little bit sometimes, you know, just select people that I really care about and love. But, um, I, I I like the shock value, and then ha, ha, watch them, in the, and then I go. You're right. You're right. You know, I'll pro- my heart will probably stop by tomorrow. Thanks. It's been good knowing you. You know, I don't know. I don't have time. I don't. I don't know. I don't have time for it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I I kind of professionally do that. You know, as a way. I mean, <laughs> right. it's, why, it's what I do every day is is provoke people, and and you know, I mean, because I think it's important to get that that message out there. Um, you know, aside from you said no rehab, you didn't do any physical therapy. Tell me a little bit about the knees over toes stuff. What are you doing that that has changed, I guess, your knees or other parts of your body? Well, specifically, I I, I built, a, I'm a carpenter by trade. So I built a sled. I was doing a lot of backward, uh, what do they call that? Backward walking with, you know, resistance, um, sled training, um, go down to the local park. I pumped up my basketball, or shoot some hoops, do some quasi interval training with, with that. But now I'm doing kind of, I call it a modified pistol. They call it something else on, on Ben's show, but, um, these one legged, um, knee bends basically essentially, and and sometimes with weights, sometimes without. And what I was doing when I came on the show was I've got 25 pound barbells and this is an authorized, you'll never see this on a, on a video, but I have the slant board. I'm barefoot. So my feet are like, I have to use some balance to when I'm doing the one-legged pistols, modified pistol pistols, but I go down with the 25 pounds squat and then push them up over my head. And then, and then I do, I try to do a hundred of them. So 10 sets of 10 of those, which literally three months ago, I could do like five of those maybe. And I was completely gassed and now I'm doing a hundred of them. Like that, that doesn't make sense to me. That doesn't register with my brain. Like, and I'm at just at the beginning of my journey. So something's, something's afoot here. Yeah. I mean that, and, and I think, you know, and I've indirectly, I've communicated with Ben a few times. I think he is a, a fan of carnivore, carnivore-ish type diets as well. And I think that has, I mean, it, you know, it's interesting you combine these things. And I think the carnivore diet for many people allows them and gives them the the recovery and the lack of inflammation to start some of this more advanced um, exercise to, to, to hopefully strengthen the joints in, in more extreme ranges of motion, which is what he is largely doing. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as, you know, you said, you, you know, you're not hungry very often, uh, ribeyes dipped in butter and things like that. 
have you, I mean, cause people are going to ask, you know, you, you get this question. What about your cholesterol? Have you, have you examined that? I mean, are, are you, are you tracking any of that stuff at this point? You know, I, I, I've been really starting back five years ago before the accident, I was really interested in these glucose, continuous glucose monitors and all that stuff. And I, I bought a precision two. I can't remember, you know, just a regular prick your finger, look at ketone bodies and look at your, uh, mm -hmm. glucose. And I'm still, I'm spot checking myself cause I'm just curious. Um, but to answer your question specifically, I, I, well, I'll, I'll segue a little bit. I, I'm on the road. I, 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 you know, Vail Valley is based off of I-70, major interstate, and there's fast food restaurants at every whatever. But I, I, I'm not ashamed to admit that I'll frequent these fast food places. And sometimes it, it's not like I'm not proud of it, but sometimes I just want to feel like a little extra special. My little treat is I'll get some of that crappy cheese on my meat patties. But I'll order the other day I went through. I won't say which one, but I went through one of the drive throughs because I was just kind of been jammed up and I bought, I bought six hamburger patties for less than 10 bucks, mm -hmm. you know, and they don't really ask any questions because they must have other people doing that too. And got a, you know, ice water to go. And I, I was happy, you know, and, and there's something about the, the ritual for me that I've driven through so many fast food restaurants. There's something about the ritual driving through restaurant, fast food restaurant that feels good to me. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that sounds crazy, but the ritual of eating, like I can still have some of my old ritual, but still be feeding my body. Uh, okay. Yeah. I mean, and you know, for the people that have read my book, I specifically say in the book, you know, Hey, look, we've already got a dis distribution center for meat. I mean, these fast food restaurants have high quality beef. I know people will criticize that, but I mean, McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, some of the major outlets, it's all 100% beef and it's not cooked in seed oil. They don't waste the money on that. I mean, you ask them, why would they, they're like, why would we spend money cooking on seed oil when the meat already has fat in it? So it's generally a pretty good health food. And anytime, and I would, I would do that on the road too. I'd stop into a Wendy's and order up eight or 10 or 12, you know, their patties. And sometimes I throw some bacon on there occasionally. I put the cheese, just like you occasionally, I'll put the cheese, but often not in and out in California. I did that a lot. It wasn't my main source of meal, but when I went there, I didn't feel bad about it. I didn't feel like, oh my God, I'm hurting myself. And I wasn't. And, you know, the interesting thing is, you know, anytime you go in there and you look around, you see, you know, there's plenty of obese people. They're, they're, they're look unhealthy. And they're, they're, they're stuffing that. But they're, they've always got a big old, you know, 48 ounce Coke and a bunch of fries. And, you know, you never see them eating beef patties by themselves. You just don't see that. And, you know, when you order it, they're like, mm -hmm. I mean, depending on where you're at, sometimes they're more comfortable. Like, I remember in and out was pretty comfortable. You got to wear burger patties and they were no big deal. But some places are like, what? And they couldn't figure out how to, they bring the manager over to figure out how to ring it up. And it was, just a, yeah. it was always, it was just like, okay, look, there's a button that says add on burger, but use that one. And I'd have to, <laughs> you know, I'd negotiate up front. I just first, I'd walk in there and say, Hey, do you guys sell single burger patties by themselves? And they'd say, yes. Then I say, well, what do they cost? And then they'd look it up and say, Oh, it's a dollar 29 or whatever, dollar 49. I say, okay, give me 10 of them. I mean, I, 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 you know, I negotiated the price before I, cause if you just order, give me a, burger with you know then they charge you for the burger and you get you know you get raped at the at the register <laughs> yeah i've been there but but it's it's it is it's interesting you know they're there because there's so many people talk about food deserts but if you go to any poor community there's always mcdonald's there's always a word wendy's or something like that. you can walk in there buy burger patties and literally reverse diabetes and reverse obesity in many cases i mean that that's that's a, that's a crazy thing about this and uh so it's good to see you know like i said you're you're having all this benefit with this um Quality of life difference between now and, and what it was, I don't know, a year or two or whatever, whenever you started this journey, you know, you know, after the accident, obviously it's better. Now, if, 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 if I told you that, Hey, um, you know, that's great. You're doing great, but you've increased your risk for heart disease by 10 or 20%. What would you say? Would you say, it's, I don't care. It's not worth it to me to, to change. What are your thoughts on that? Well, probably what I would really say in real life, if I saw you face to face would be not appropriate for this podcast, but, <laughs> um, I, I don't care, I guess would be the bottom line. Right. Uh, quality of life is better. Clearly. Yeah. I, I would rather have, I'd rather feel like this than 50 more years of being miserable. Like I was that, that that's not a way to live. Yeah, that's a common that's, theme. And I, I'm not even, you know, like I said, again, the jury is still out on whether or not you're increasing or decreasing your risk of heart disease. I just don't think we know yet. And I think there's good evidence. I mean, I mean, if we, well, I mean, I guess you, you're you worried about one risk factor. This is this LDL cholesterol, this ApoB, but then what are the other risk factors for heart disease that have improved for you? And I mean, you know, obviously losing weight, obesity is a big one. 
I, you know, I don't know what else was going on, but we know metabolic syndrome. We know that hypertension, we know that, uh, you know, uh, uh, diabetes for sure. I mean, these things are huge, huge markers of, uh, or risk factors that have, depending on which study you read, a much greater impact than, than does your, L, even your triglyceride levels may have more of an impact than uh, your LDL levels. So it's, so it's an interesting discussion. And I think it's one that uh, most physicians are incapable of that nuance, or they tend to disregard, uh, you know, you know, you'll put, they'll put down, um, Offered statin, patient refused, patient noncompliance. You know, and and that's that's the that's what goes into the chart when the when the real thing should be after a thorough discussion of the patient risk and benefits. You know, the patient felt the risks outweighed the benefits, and and that's that's a more you know I think a more accurate or, or should be a more ethical thing to do, but we don't often see that unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Have you been able to? Uh, influence anybody in your around like any of your co-work because you i mean like you said you you said hey i'm i'm saving money by not screwing up and making mistakes when my cognition is enhanced now you've got employees and they're we're all prone to error and mistakes and they're they, you know you're they're probably lo- have you been able to influence any of your employees say hey look this diet will help the company in general i mean has that been has that been part of the discussion you thought or anything you're calculating that well, well, I don't know if you've ever, you've probably been on a couple of job sites in your lifetime, but you know, guys out there, yeah. you know, running jackhammers and stuff, we're really not talking about, you know, lipid panels, um, stuff like that. Yeah, they'll, so, talk, they'll talk about hamburger patties, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So no, but, uh, directly I, I have a podcast that's hence I have the equipment, but, um, I've been able to touch some people. Now I haven't come, I haven't come out of the closet on my podcast as carnivore. I, I've hinted at it. I've had uh Dr. Ash Zarian, who you've had on the show. We did a podcast mm-hmm. several months ago when I first came to the community. I'm gonna do a pre-podcast talking about, you know, kicking the something to the effect of kicking the, the tires on carnivore. And then I'm gonna play the Ash, Dr. Ash version uh mm-hmm. episode after that. So I've got that. But I I have affected a couple people, infected, affected. I don't know how you say that, but um, a friend of mine in Portland, Oregon, she shout out to her. Um, but she, she is just globbed onto this and is changing her world. So we have that community within us. And I've really connected with a lot of people in the Rivero community. So I, I'm very, very, very thankful. So yeah, it's, I think this will have the butterfly ripple effect in the, in the end game. Yeah. It's kind of fun. Cause I, you know, you know, we have a lot of like, we just diff- different people like doing construction projects around the house home improvement and, and you know the contractors there and i'm at home cooking a steak and i'm like hey dude you want you know i'll cook them a steak i said hey man why don't you give me a steak with me you know get take a break and and then i'll and i'll force my ideology <laughs> you know let's talk about because i you know i just i just feel like you know gosh this is something that, that more people should know about and you yeah. know the, the nice thing for me you know i'm, I'm a, a fit guy that people look at and they're like wow you're, you're really in shape and you know what are you doing and so then i have that opportunity to do it and here why well, we won't oh, let's, let's sit down and have a steak we'll talk about it and, uh, you know, there most people, like I said, most men, I mean, in particular, it's, it's not hard to get them to eat a steak, you know, or, or, you know, eat a hamburger patty or something like that. So yeah, you get that and you get some people that are pretty, uh, you know, but I'm just wondering, you know, like I said, you know, if, if you had a, a company that, that the company policy, you know, and again, you can't enforce this stuff, but the, the company philosophy was, Hey, let's eat some more steak and let's be more productive and how that would go. And you, you, you know, you do an experiment and see what happens with the finances and the overall, you know, whatever It'd be an interesting, fun thing to do. I think. Yeah. Yeah. What have you had any downsides? Cause people ask about downsides, any negativities, you know, some sleeplessness, constipation, you know, I don't know any, any, any negatives thus far. Hey, you know, I, it, it's so inconsequential when you look at the overall gains and benefits, but the, you know, I had a loose stool. I, I battled that a little bit, but like I said, I was, I was, I was re I received the gift of desperation mm where a little loose stool for me was not a big deal and something I, I, you know, that, that if the side effects are, yeah, the side effects of the side effects of carnivore here, here, here are the side effects of carnivore for me. And I'll just summarize it. I am no longer homicidal or suicidal. Hmm. Uh, I perform better at work. I'm a nicer guy. Um, I can show up for people in their lives. Uh, another person that's kind of, he was already leaning this way, but he started talking to me. He was my brother. My brother is a team driver. They're long haul truckers. And thank God for that. We have long haul truckers to provide all this goods and services we have in the, in the, in the country. But, um, he's 
you know, he's, he just texted me this morning, how he cooked up this much of this and this, that much that are going on their next trip, you know, it's all meat. And so, yeah, I've got family that's, you know, kind of getting on board and, and he was already halfway there, but, um, yeah, I don't even remember what your original question was. I'm just going off on my, well, on just my if there's any, been any negative negativity, any, any negative side effects. No. And, and, and like I said, I, I have a personality defect. I like kind of like sticking the knife sometimes. And that's what brought me to you because I start, I turned on to you when you made some video about something, it was during the pandemic or whatever that was. And you were kind of like anti-establishment and anti, you know, uh, Western medicine, you know, and, and yeah, asterisk, you know, we understand that we need doctors and emergency medicine, et cetera. So don't, don't, don't peg me on that, but um, yeah, the, how we think about antidepressants and benzodiazepines and all these things, not just our, our physical structure and diabetes, but you know, the, 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 the antidepressant market in 2019, don't quote me on this was, I think a, a 12 or $14 billion industry. And by 2027, by some e or uh, websites that you look at, it's going to be a, a, a $22 billion industry in pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. And I and we can go off on a tangent. I know we're running a short of time, but how the DSM was written and all these mental health things that I touch upon on my podcast, like it's it's all integrated. And anytime I can be a little bit anti-establishment, I'm I'm all for it. And that's what I appreciate about you, Dr. Baker, is you put your neck out there and you're just doing it. So I I really I, I'm really humbled to be on your podcast. Well, I mean, likewise, I appreciate anybody. I mean, so, you know, like I said, it's, I think we're all on the same journey. And I think, you know, they're like, I, and I've said this many times. Yes. If I, if I am in a car crash and my femur is sticking out of my thigh, take me to a, to a hospital, don't feed me ribeye steaks, you know, obviously, but there, there is a, I mean, there's, there's, there's limits to what we do in medicine that are beneficial. And I think, you know, we are going more and more towards, you know, the, the model that is, that is really harming people instead of helping people. And it's not anti-medicine, but I think there's certain aspects of medicine which are problematic and are probably doing more harm than good. We have to step away from that and we have this grassroots type thing. You live in Colorado. Colorado, well, you mentioned Boulder, you know, Boulder, you know, University of Colorado is up there. There's a lot of, you know, progressive, hippie, granola-y type stuff, you know, I'm sure veganism and plant-based stuff. How... Uh, how prevalent is that in Colorado? I know there was a there was a an attempt to, I know the the, the governor Jared Polis attempted to have a meet out day and that got there was huge backlash and it ended up backfiring on him. But what do you, what is the vibe there in Vail or or near, I guess Eagle? I mean I mean is it is it are we getting more to this like everybody needs to go give up meat to save the planet? I mean I know a lot of people in California live there, not California in Colorado live there because they like the fresh air and the mountains and outdoor and preserve the environment. Do you see that or is it, or do you, do you see that, that, uh, um, what you're doing is, is fine? Yeah. It, you know, you, you can't, you're not supposed to talk religion or politics and I'll probably touch on both here in a second, but, um, yeah, I mean, being a little bit plugged into the Boulder community where I was born and raised, there's a, a newspaper there called the daily camera. And I don't know, I was down there a month ago, visiting my folks, whip open the paper. And there was this big editorial about how, uh, one pound of meat takes like i think it was over 600 gallons of water to yeah. produce and and so we're now now people i'm just telling i'm reporting the weather here people are worried about carbon footprints now they're worried about water footprints and 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 all this stuff but it's so slanted and biased and i hate to say it but this this bias toward i don't get me started i i think you <laughs> you, you don't get me started okay so yeah, I better just stop there. Do you have any follow-up questions? <laughs> well, I mean, the water argument is, I mean, it's its so ridiculous in its premise because 95, 98% of the water is rainwater, which is, it falls regardless of the cows there or not. And then, then any water, they ingest, they urinate back out and it goes into the water cycle. So they're not, they're not destroying or taking away any water. I mean, it's an absolutely ridiculous argument. The blue, you know, it's blue water versus green water versus gray water. And they don't want to, they don't want to provide any nuance or actually tell you what's going on. They just want to, they just want their emotion-based talking points, which unfortunately it works well. I mean, that's why you have this, you know, just have somebody screeching into the camera. It's screaming hysterically about some emotions. And then, you know, it's, it's, it, will we see this, this, this continuously, but I am encouraged that I see more and more 
calm, level-headed people. And it's interesting. I think a lot of people, when they come to carnivore and they start eating and their brain starts working for the first time in decades, they're, they're sort of perspective changes in a lot mm-hmm. of ways. Are you finding that as well? Well, for me personally, yeah. And, and, and really I'm, I'm, uh, you know, this is woo woo, but I'm, I'm more loving of the people that have political beliefs different than mine. I'll just say that and more tolerant. And, and, you know, I, I have patience for them. I mean, Colorado is, is really trying to catch up with California politically and, that, you know, we've got an election come up and vote however the heck you want. But yeah, Jared Polis made a meet out day, pissed off all the ranchers and agriculture. And and on a, on my podcast, we interviewed my co-host and I on that particular episode. We interviewed the uh, Danny Moore, the the lieutenant governor candidate for the state of Colorado, and I asked him that question specifically. So you have to check out that episode of my podcast, and 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 hopefully you don't mind me plugging my podcast. No, no. What what is the name of it, by the way? Because it's I'm- called the. Builder's journey. Builder's journey. And it's a okay. behind the scenes look at the val- valley through the eyes of a builder. And we don't talk anything about building. So I don't teach you how to put, hang a shelf or anything like that. Talk a lot about this mental health stuff. And and soon, soon the builder's journey will be converted to carnivore fully. And I'm going to have carnivore guests on the show and doctors and hopefully you and all sorts of people. And we're going to spread the word. Oh, I'd be happy to. Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you what, we un- we are unfortunately run out. I got to do, so I got a couple consultations I've got to do here in a few minutes. So uh, with that said, Alex, thank you so much for sharing your journey. Um, thanks for being part of the community. Uh, if somebody wanted to listen to your podcast or do you have any other social media you'd like to like to let people know about? Yeah. The podcast is The Builder's Journey. It's on all the places, uh, you know, Google and Spotify and all that, Apple and all that good stuff. I recently got on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at tbj podcast as in the builder's journey so at tbj and you can always email me alex at plumkendall.com and it's always on the show notes on the podcast all right well thanks so much rest of you guys thanks we'll be back tomorrow so all right thanks for stepping in alex appreciate it all right yeah you bet thanks sean take care everybody bye-bye now yeah